In this video, I will be showing you how to design the electrical services for commercial development. The example is based on part 7 of the HB301 standard. The design will be performed using Cable Pro Web software. Here is the site layout plan. There are two buildings. The first contains five showrooms, and the second contains two light industrial units. There is a 500 kV amp transformer provided by the supply authority. The transformer connects to an adjacent main switchboard, which will have an MEN link. The first building with supply connected to the metering panel contains five distribution boards. There is one board for each showroom. The second building, also connected to the metering panel, contains two factory units. Each factory unit has one distribution board, along with one connected downstream. The cable lengths are shown in the diagram, which will be important later for cable sizing. A protective earth cable will be reticulated with the sub-mains cables to the buildings. I've opened up a new LV network calculation in the software. Under network settings, let's adjust the following settings. Leave the supply voltage, the frequency, and the voltage tolerance values as default. Under allowable voltage drop, since we have a substation on site, we will set the value for network, which is the total allowable voltage drop for the installation, to 7%. For mains cable, set this to 0.05%, since the consumer's mains will be a short section of the cable. The software will automatically allocate voltage drop limits to the cables to achieve this limit. Under cable calculation standard, leave it set to the Australian standard, but there are multiple options. Next, go to the supply from the drop down menu. We will set up the transformer supply. Change the supply type to transformer. Leave the primary voltage as 11 kilovolts and set the primary fault level to 14.4 kiloamps, both of which were obtained from the power authority. Switch auto sizing of the transformer off and enter a custom rating of 500 kilovolt amps. Switch on custom transformer impedance and change the impedance voltage to 5%. Leave the XR ratio at 10. Next, we will add the switchboards that are downstream from the transformer and the main switchboard in the proper hierarchy. We will also set up the maximum demand for each of the switchboards. Note that there are error checks inbuilt with the software, and they may appear as we enter data to warn or guide us. Before we add anything else, change the allowable voltage drop for loads for the main switchboard to 2%. Add the metering distribution board Leave phases as three phase. Enter allowable voltage drop for loads as 2%. Leave total load based on equal to maximum demand calculation. This setting means that all of the downstream maximum demand will be combined with that of this board. We will come back to the cable size tab for the metering panel, so leave that for now. Add showroom 1 dB downstream of the metering panel. Leave phases as 3 phase, enter allowable voltage drop for loads as 2%, and leave total load based on equal to maximum demand calculation. Next, go to the maximum demand tab. Currently displayed and highlighted on screen are the loads that need to be added to the showroom 1DB. You can add loads by pressing the add load button and selecting the electrical installation, load group, subgroup if applicable, and then changing the phases and quantity. Add each load based on the table that was just displayed. As you can see on screen now, there is a lighting load, a socket outlet load, and a heating element load. All showroom distribution boards have the same maximum demand, Copy four more switchboards for showroom distribution boards two to five under the metering panel. Add DB1 for factory unit one to be downstream from the metering panel and DB1-1 downstream from DB1. For both switchboards, leave phases as three phase, Enter allowable voltage drop for loads as 2%, and 
and then leave the total load based on equal to maximum demand calculation, so that all of the downstream maximum demand will be combined with that of this board. Currently displayed and highlighted on screen are the loads that need to be added to DB1-1. Go to the Maximum Demand tab of DB1-1 and click Add Load to add each of the loads. As you can see on screen, there is a lighting load, a socket outlet load, a heating element load, and a motor load. Both of the factory units have the same number of distribution boards with the same loads. Therefore, make copies of DB1 and DB1-1. If you select DB1 and press copy, it will include the downstream switchboards. Rename them as DB2 and DB2-1 respectively. Now we have finished setting up the switchboards, their hierarchy, and their demand. Let's take a look at the single line diagram to check we've set up the switchboards correctly. Click on single line diagram from this drop down menu. Zoom in with the mouse wheel and pan by pressing the left mouse button to check that it matches with the installation. Next, we will do the cable sizing and enter the protective device ratings. Note that discrimination of the protective devices will not be considered in detail in this example. First, let's calculate the consumer's mains cable size. Select the main switchboard from the network tree. Note the load currents under the calculation results on the right side of the screen. The maximum load current of the phases is shown as 479.8 amps. This is used to calculate the neutral current, which will be used for cable sizing and protective device selection. Go to the Cable Size tab. The consumer's mains cable is a three-phase cable. The length of run is 3 meters. Note under Network Settings, the allowable voltage drop for this cable was set to 0.05%. The cable type is PVC, single core, with copper conductors. The installation is buried enclosure combined. The depth of burial is 0.5 meters, which is standard depth, therefore no derating calculations are required. Under protection, set the device to be MCCB, with a rating of 630 amps and a thermal setting of 630 amps. Set the trip multiplier to be 7.5. Under cable size, note that the active size is 630 millimeters squared with an actual voltage drop of 0.02%. Note that all cable details will be included in the cable schedule. Next, click on the metering DB in the network tree. Go to the cable size tab. Enter the length of run to be 60 meters, which is the distance to the main switchboard. The cable type and installation are the same as the consumer's mains cables. Under protection, set the device to be MCCB with a rating of 630 amps and a thermal setting of 500 amps. Set the trip multiplier to be 7.5. Under cable size, note that the active size is 500 millimeters squared with an actual voltage drop of 0.61%. Next, the showroom distribution board's cable sizes should be set. Note that each showroom DB will have a different cable length depending on where they sit on site relative to the metering DB. Showroom 1 has a length of 50 meters, showroom 2 40 meters, showroom 3 30 meters, showroom 4 20 meters, and showroom 5 10 meters. Click on showroom 1 in the network tree and go to the cable size tab. Enter the length of run to be 50 meters, which is the length to the metering DB. The cable type is the same as the consumer mains cable, but set the installation to be unenclosed space from surface. Under protection, set the device to be MCCB with a rating of 63 amps and thermal setting of 63 amps. Set the trip multiplier to be 7.5 also. Note that under cable size, the active size is 16 mm squared with an actual voltage drop of 1.79%. Do the same for showrooms 2 to 5, Every setting will be the same, except for the length of run for each cable, which was established earlier. Finally, the factory unit distribution boards. Click on DB1 in the network tree and go to the cable size tab. Enter the length of run to be 60 meters. The cable type and installation are the same as the consumer's main cables. Under protection, set the device to be MCCB with a rating of 200 amps and a thermal setting of 200 amps. Set the trip multiplier to be 
Note that under cable size, the active size is 95 mm squared with an actual voltage drop of 0.5%. Next, click on DB1-1 in the network tree and go to the cable size tab. Enter the length of run to be 40 meters. Set the cable type to be the same as the consumer's mains cables, but set the installation type as unenclosed, spaced from surface. Under protection, set the device to be MCCB with a rating of 100 amps and a thermal setting of 100 amps. Set the trip multiplier to be 7.5. Note that under cable size, the active size is 25 mm squared with an actual voltage drop of 1.36%. Click on DB2 in the network tree and go to the cable size tab. Make the settings the same as DB1, except with a length of run of 20 meters. Click on DB2-1 in the network tree and go to the cable size tab. Make the settings the same as DB1-1. Now that we've completed setting up the calculations, let's examine the reports. Go to Results in the drop-down menu. From the Parameters to List drop-down, we can select the report we'd like to look at. The titles of the reports are self-explanatory. The Maximum Demand at Switchboards table shows all the loads we added for the showroom and factory unit DBs. The fault level at switchboards table shows the calculated fault level at each of the switchboards. The voltage drop of cables table shows the cables and their actual voltage drop in percentage, as well as the corresponding maximum allowed voltage drop for that cable. Note that aside from the consumer's mains cable of the main switchboard, the maximum allowed voltage drop has been automatically calculated to meet the overall maximum voltage drop of 7% for the electrical installation. The accumulated voltage drop table shows all of the circuit paths from the main switchboard downstream. The path with the largest overall voltage drop is 4.49%. The fault loop impedance of cables table should show that the maximum allowed impedance is more than the actual impedance, which ensures that the protective devices will trip in the event of a short circuit. There is a switchboard schedule that shows the phase loading for all of the switchboards, along with a cable schedule, which lists all the details of the cables in the installation. All of the calculation results can be exported to a comprehensive PDF report, which includes the single line diagram. This single line diagram and all of the tables of results can also be exported as an AutoCAD drawing. If you click single line diagram in the drop down menu and then click export CAD, you can export a DXF file that's able to be opened in AutoCAD. The single line diagram and all of the tables of results can be seen in the AutoCAD drawing. The standard provides an example hand calculation of electrical installation design for light industrial units, which is helpful to understand the fundamentals. However, there are certainly disadvantages to performing electrical calculations by hand, aside from taking a lot of your time. Hand calculations are often not as accurate, they are prone to errors, and they are quite difficult to modify should changes be required. In this example, I've shown you that it's possible to design an entire commercial electrical installation like this in under 10 minutes, and in full compliance with the standards. If you'd like to try for free the software I've demonstrated, please visit www.elec.com.au. Thank you for watching.